Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books, Ink, and Paper. It's summer. And today let's talk about great summer reads. Some of these are reads that I think I'm going to get to this summer. And some of them I may not, but I really think that they might be something you would love to read during the summer months. <clears throat> Summer reads for me are reads that are sometimes set in the summer, sometimes they're not, but they're reads that I just feel like would be satisfying for some reason, and all of these hit that mark for me, so let's get to it. So I have two by Kate Morton that I really think would be fantastic reads for the summer. The first is The House at Riverton, and this one is a dual timeline, and it follows a 1924 English country home where a young poet takes his life and then uh, there are some witnesses and then fast forwards to 1999 in the winter where Grace Bradley 98 is visited by somebody who wants to learn more and maybe make a film about the young poet's suicide and wants to know what Grace knows about this. Uh, so it's set in summer and winter. I think it would be great fun. And I may be taking a look at this in June or July as well. The Lake House, which I do not own, is another Kate Morton that I have wanted to read and marked it to read several years ago. The Lake House is, again, set in summer. Uh, Midsummer's Eve, a young girl, I think her name is Alice. Let me look. It is Alice Edvane. She's writing and dreaming of her life and enjoying everything. And then her brother goes missing and they don't know what happened to him. And uh, he's only 11 months old. And so this of course tears the family apart. And years later, Alice is a successful writer, dual timeline again. And this kind of keeps coming up for her and she's always wondered what happened to her brother Theo. So uh, a neat twist, dual timeline, great Kate Morton. She's a great storyteller and I really adore her and I think you'll like her too. If you've never read her or if you have, let me know how you feel about the two of these as well. This novel I have not read, but I've seen the adaptation and long, long, long ago loved it. And I would like to read this at some point, and that's The Chamomile Lawn by Mary Wesley. The Chamomile Lawn is a character study of a group of friends who are in August 1939 when they begin to come together. Sorry, they're not friends, they're cousins, five cousins. They come together all the time in this summer space and they uh, have an annual summer holiday and they also do something, a ritual they call a terror run. And so it follows the lives of these four cousins through the Spanish Civil War, through other um, things, through adulthood and even through old age. So it really captures this family saga over a large span of time. And it was an adaptation I think was on PBS but this is a classic Mary Wesley, and I hope it's as good as the, as the adaptation that I saw, and I would love to get to this, maybe this summer, maybe this fall. This is something that keeps calling me to read it, and that is A Pagan's Nightmare by um, Ray Blackston, who also wrote a novel called Flabbergasted. Megan gave me this for the uh, Advent Book Exchange, and I do try to get to one of those a month. I don't always, but I try really hard to do that. And this one is hilarious. So it's about, um, it's one of the last remaining unbelievers in a world populated by Christians. And uh, Christians have this, it says Christians can buy gas for 12 cents a gallon while everyone else, the pagans that is, has to pay $6.66, $6.66. Radio stations alter all their song lyrics to conform to Christian standards. The Beatles belt out, I want to hold your tithe. Abba's Dancing Queen becomes Dancing's Wrong, and even French fries are now labeled mixed scriptures and have tools for evangelism on them. It sounds hilarious. Uh, <laughs> it just is a good, fun read. Very short. I'd love to get to that this summer, but you might want to take a look. When I un 
or when I hauled it and unwrapped it for the Advent Book Exchange, several of you, several of you were uh, laughing hysterically at this. It does sound hysterically funny. On the other side of the spectrum, though, this one is not particularly light, but it is a book I've had on my shelf since it was published, and I have not gotten to it. I'd love to get this off my back list. It is Vanessa Diffenbach's uh, The Language of Flowers, and I got this when I was still doing child advocacy work with victims of crime and in particular uh, foster children and victims of sexual assault. This was written in 2011 and I left that work in 2013, 2014. So it's been a while. Also short read. So this follows a foster child whose um, name is Victoria Jones and she spent her childhood in foster care, wasn't close to anyone, and her only connection to the world is through flowers and their meanings. Because this is the time of growth and, uh, and florals and beautiful lush color, I just thought this might be a good time to look at this. Now she's 18, emancipated, sleeping in the parks, has a small garden, and meets somebody who, um, maybe is gonna influence a shift in her life. I think this would be a lovely summer read for me and hopefully for you too, if you haven't already read it. A thriller, The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. We need a combination of all kinds of things, right? A family saga, a thriller, a, a coming of age story, a humorous story and murder and mayhem or something to that effect. So Little Port, Maine, uh, vacation town, summer. And uh, the, these two friends, Sadie Lohman, who is a visitor and Little Port resident, Avery Greer. And for every summer, for a decade, they come together every summer when so Sadie comes to visit and they are together happily and inseparable. And then Sadie is found dead. Um, the police rule it as a suicide, but Avery doesn't believe it. And again, short, easy read. Forgot to silence my phone, sorry. Short, easy read. Summer setting, lovely cover. What I love about this book, you guys, is do you see the raindrops on the cover? They're embossed. You can feel the rain. I know, I love it so much. And the last one I recommend is Summer's Lease by John Mortimer. I used to have a copy of it and I don't anymore. I'm going to show you the copy that is on Goodreads. No, I'm not going to show you the copy that's on Goodreads that way. Can you see it? Ooh, John Mortimer. There we go. There are several releases of this book. It was published uh, in the 90s. Let me see. It was published in 91. This was also adapted into, an, I think, a public television uh, piece with John Gilgood. So this follows the Pargeter family, and they lease a place in Tuscany, in, or a villa in Tuscany, or near a small Tuscan town, for three weeks. And it doesn't really go well. And they're also really curious about their landlord and where their landlord is. And so there's just some unease, but for three weeks they're kind of isolated in this, in this house. And um, yeah, I just, it's a great escape to Italy for a couple of hours or days, however long it takes you to read it. It's not a huge long read, as I recall, and I really enjoyed it. I would love to reread that in the summer too. It was a pick for me for the summer for a long, long time. I may have actually talked about that last summer now that I think about it. I don't know. So that's seven possible summer reads for you to take a look at this year. And if you've read them before, tell me about it. Tell me if you like them. Tell me what your favorite summer reads are. And as always, happy, happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.